Good morning. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. We're glad to have each and every one of you on this kind of cool, beautiful Sunday morning as we gather together to worship the Lord, as we gather together to lift up the name of Jesus Christ, that name that's above all names. We gather together to fellowship one with another, to pray for one another, to lift up one another, to make a difference in one another's lives. We gather this morning to worship the Lord. Hymn number 369, Blessed Assurance, Jesus is Mine. <laughs> morning. Glad to have you all with us this morning. Uh, have you ever been fishing and didn't catch anything? The fish wasn't biting? Yeah, been that way. That's the way that those disciples were on the Sea of Galilee. They fished all night and they didn't catch a thing. But then the next morning Jesus told them to cast the nets on the other side on the right side, and when they throwed their nets on the other side, they caught 153. So when you go fishing and the fish don't bite, don't give up. Just keep on, hold on, and the Lord's don't provide, the Lord's don't meet your needs. And in life, we had that same situation where we have days when the fish don't bite and things don't go our way, but we don't give up. The Lord will provide for us, and the Lord will meet our need. The Lord will send the Holy Spirit to help us, to guide us and direct us to make it so that we can get through each and every situation. So don't be discouraged. Don't give up when those fish don't bite, because one of these days the fish is going to come. The Lord is going to provide. The Lord will meet our needs, and the Lord will take care of us. And so remember, when you have a bad day, remember there's going to be some good days to follow. So keep that in mind as we continue to trust the Lord. Heavenly Father, we thank you for 
all those good days that followed those difficult times. Heavenly Father, we ask that you just continue to bless each and every one of these precious children. Heavenly Father, walk with them in a mighty way. Heavenly Father, when they're disappointed, reach down and just let them know that they're not alone, that you will never leave them nor forsake them, but you will be with them even unto the end. Heavenly Father, continue to watch over these and guide them and direct them and take care of them. For we, Lord, we ask it all in Jesus' wonderful and precious name. Amen. Thank you. As we go to the Lord in prayer this morning, we continue to lift up Miss Frances and we ask the Lord to continue to be with her and hopefully that she'll be back with us shortly and we just ask the Lord to continue to touch her. Barbara had surgery uh, this week and on, uh, with her kidney stones and uh, we continue to pray that everything don't go well and hopefully in a couple weeks she'll be able to go back and get the other kidney taken care of. And so we're looking forward to the time when she will have peace and joy in her heart and free of pain. So we continue to lift her up and ask the Lord to be with her in, in a mighty way. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, as we come before your throne of grace this day, Lord, we thank you for your goodness and for your mercy. Lord, we thank you for all that you continue to do for each and every one of your precious children. Heavenly Father, we thank you for meeting our needs and providing for us. Heavenly Father, we pray that you would just continue to encircle each and every one with your loving arms and hold them close and bless them mightily. Heavenly Father, continue to be with all those that are recovering from surgery and Heavenly Father, all those that are facing different situations in life. Lord, you know each and every one of our hearts and Lord, we just ask that you might meet those needs. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your son, Jesus Christ, and we thank you for your grace and your mercy and for what Jesus Christ did for us on Calvary's cross. Through his shed blood, we find life and we find it abundantly. We find that assurance of eternal life. Heavenly Father, continue to be with us and watch over us. And Heavenly Father, we thank you for that assurance and that hope that we find in your Son, Jesus Christ. Heavenly Father, we pray for all those that are in need of your touch today. Heavenly Father, we continue to think about all of the evil in the world today and all that's going on in the world around about us. Lord, we ask for your touch to be upon each and every one of these families and Lord, be with them in a mighty way. And Heavenly Father, we ask that you might be with each and every one gathered here today. Heavenly Father, that you might touch each and every one of us and that you might meet our needs as you walk with us day by day. And Heavenly Father, we'll always give you the praise and the glory. Heavenly Father, we pray for your precious Holy Spirit to fill each and every one of our hearts. We pray that your Holy Spirit will guide us and direct us and draw us closer to you and closer to one another. That we will love one another as you have loved us, that we will care for one another, that we will make that difference in one another's lives. Heavenly Father, continue to be with us in a mighty way, and we give you the praise and the glory. Thank you for the prayer that Jesus prayed on many occasions, taught his disciples to pray, and we pray this morning as your children, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Hymn number 367, He Touched Me.
Our Psalter reading is found on page 762 as we read from Psalm 30. I will extol you, O Lord, for you have lifted me up and did not let my foes rejoice over me. O oh Lord, you brought up my soul from Sheol. Restored me to life from among those gone down to the pit. Sing praises to the Lord, O oh, his faithful ones, and give thanks to his holy name. Surely the Lord's anger is but for a moment, the Lord's favor is for a lifetime. Weeping may tear for the night, but joy comes with the morning. By your favor, O oh Lord, you have established me as a strong mountain. You hid your face, and I was dismayed. To you, O oh Lord, I cried, and to the Lord I made supplication. What profit is there in my death if I go down to the pit? Will the dust praise you? Will it tell of your faithfulness? You have turned my mourning into dancing. You have loosed my sackcloth and girded me with gladness that my soul may praise you and not be silent. O oh Lord my God, I will give thanks to you forever. Announcements. Let's remember next Saturday, May 11th. Join us for the daughters' brunches from 10 to 12. Tickets are five dollars, and you can purchase them from Glenda, and she'll be glad to uh, give them to you for five dollars this morning. And so keep that in mind. And then remember, for the month of May, we will be collecting the underwear and briefs for the uh, men and women of the memorial home. And so we only have four Sundays to take care of that. So let's be sure to help them and make that difference in their lives. May we worship the Lord with our tithes and our offering. Heavenly Father, we truly thank you for these gifts and those that have given them. 
Heavenly Father, receive these gifts and use them for the uplifting of your kingdom as we make a difference in the world around about us. We ask it all in Jesus' name. Amen. the Gospel of John, the 21st chapter, as we begin with verse 1. After these things, Jesus showed himself again to the disciples at the Sea of Tiberias, and on the wise showed he himself. Now there was together Simon Peter and Thomas called Didymus and Nathaniel of Canaan, Galilee, and the sons of Zebedee and two of his disciples. 
Now Simon Peter said unto them, I go a fishing. They said unto him, We also go with thee. They went forth and entered into a ship immediately, and that night they caught nothing. But when the morning was now come, Jesus stood on the shore, but the disciples knew not that it was Jesus. Then Jesus said unto them, Children, have you any meat? They answered him, No. And he said unto them, Cast the nets on the right side of the ship, and ye shall find. They cast therefore, and now they were not able to draw it to the, for the multitude of fish. Therefore that disciple whom Jesus loved said unto Peter, It is the Lord. Now when Simon Peter heard that it was the Lord, he girded his fisher's coat unto him, for he was naked and did cast himself into the sea. And the other disciples came in a little ship, for they were not far from land. But as it was two hundred cubics, dragging the net with fishes. As soon as they were come to land, they saw a fire of coals there, and fish laid their own in bread. Jesus said unto them, Bring of the fish which you have now caught. Simon Peter went up and drew the net to land full of great fish. There was a hundred and fifty and three. And for all there were so many, yet was not the net broken. Jesus said unto them, Come and dine. And none of the disciples does ask him, Who art thou? Knowing that it was the Lord. Jesus didn't come and take bread and give them and fish likewise. For now this is the third time that Jesus showed himself to his disciples. After that he would rise from the dead. So when they had dined, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of Jonah, lovest thou me more than these? He said unto him, Yea, Lord, Thou knowest that I love thee. He said unto him, Feed my lambs. He said to him again the second time, Simon, son of Jonah, love thou me? He said unto him, Yea, Lord, thou knowest that I love thee. He said unto him, Feed my sheep. He said unto him the third time, Simon, son of Jonah, lovest thou me? Peter was grieved because he said unto him the third time, lovest thou me? And he said unto him, Lord, thou knowest all things, thou knowest that I love thee. Jesus said unto him, feed my sheep. For verily, verily, I say unto thee, when thou was young, thou girded thyself, and walked where thou would. But when thou shalt be old, thou shalt stretch forth thy hand, and another shall gird thee, and carry thee where thou would not. This spake he, signifying by what death he should glorify God. And when he had spoken this, he said unto him, Follow me, the word of God, for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we truly thank you for this scripture and for the message that you have given unto me this day as I break the bread of life into your wonderful people. Heavenly Father, may every word that flow from my lips be pleasing unto you. And Heavenly Father, these are your precious children who have come today to hear the bread of life. Heavenly Father, may their hearts and meditation there all be pleasing unto you. 
Heavenly Father, we ask that you might anoint every word that is spoken and every word that's received. Anoint each and every person that will receive the word. For we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Our subject today is what do we do when the fish don't bite? There are days in every one of our lives when the fish don't bite. There are days in our lives when we face circumstances and situations. There are days in our lives when the fish just simply do not bite. Friday, as I was getting ready to cut the grass, I made a couple rounds with the riding lawnmower and uh, I heard a noise and then the lawnmower wouldn't go forward and it wouldn't go backwards. I checked and the belt had broken on it. And it always breaks in the wrong place for I had to push it up a hill to get it to the house. And so then after I got the lawnmower to the house, I started cutting that three acre lot with a push mower. I pushed to a dark and so the next Saturday morning, Tommy Huffman came and got the lawnmower and took it over to one of my members at Shiloh, Charles Helms, to fix it. And so I cut another three hours with the push mower and finally I got the bush hog and finished cutting up the back. And so then we had a rainstorm and we must have got over an inch and a half in about an hour's time. And so I got ready to take the trash to the dump. I got down to the drive and I had about a half a ton of trash in my driveway. Everything I think from Dial's church down ended up in my drive. And instead of the water going through the pipe, the water was going over the pipe, over the road. And so I had to end up eventually coming back to the house and getting the rake and raking all that stuff out of my drive in order for me to, to, to completely be able to use the drive. So I got all of that taken care of. But there's some days that, you know, the fish just don't buy. Things just don't go right. And I expect it was like that in the lives of those disciples. There was days when the fish just simply didn't bite. They had expected Jesus to set up his kingdom in Jerusalem, and then he did not. Mary Magdalene told the disciples that Jesus said, meet him at the Sea of Galilee. Well, they hesitated and they hid in the upper room because they were afraid. And so Jesus appeared unto them in that upper room and he breathed on them the Holy Spirit and he showed them his hands and his side. And he said, as the Father has sent me, I now send you. But Thomas was not with them. And so a week later, eight days later, Jesus appears in that upper room again. Those disciples still have not left the upper room. They still have not made that trip to the Sea of Galilee. And so there Jesus appears in that, that upper room the second time and he shows his hand and his side to Thomas. And Thomas sees Jesus and Thomas believes because he has seen 
his hands in his side. Probably a couple days later, Simon Peter makes the decision that he's going fishing. And so he says, I go fishing. I don't know if it was to meet Jesus, as Jesus had told them to meet him at the Sea of Galilee, or whether it was out of necessity for Peter to provide food for his family. But there was about six or seven of the other disciples that said, we'll go with you. And so they made that trip up to the Sea of Galilee, and they go fishing. And they fished all night, but the fish didn't bite. They didn't catch a thing. And what were they going to do? Early in the, in the morning, they heard a voice from the shore, a very unusual voice. It said, my children, just as Peter was going fishing to provide for his family, Jesus calls to his disciples and he says to them, my children, do you have any meat? They said, no. Well, Jesus said, well, cast your net on the right side. And so when they cast the net on the right side, it was full, and yet the net did not break. John the Beloved said to Simon Peter, Simon, it's the Lord. And so Simon took off his outer coat and garment and placed it there in the ship, and he made his way to the to the shore. He called for the other disciples to bring the fish. There, Jesus had prepared breakfast, fish and bread. And he said to his disciples, come and dine. And there on the Sea of Galilee, he fed those disciples. He provided for their physical need that morning. And then he looked at Simon Peter and he said, Simon, do you love me more than these? Because you remember Simon Peter had said, Lord, I'll go with you anywhere. Lord, I'll even die for you. Lord, whatever it takes, I will do. And Jesus said, Simon, do you love me more than these? And Simon said, Lord, you know I love you. And he said, feed my lamb. He was trusting Simon Peter, to take care of the new ones that would come to know the Lord Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. He said to Simon, Simon, do you love me? He said, Lord, you know I love you. He said, then feed my sheep. You see, he was putting his faith and trust in Simon Peter, that Simon Peter would take care of his sheep, those that was already in the fold, that he would strengthen the other disciples, that he would give them directions for their lives, that they too might make a difference in the world. And finally, he said, Simon, do you love me? And he said, Lord, you know I love you. Simon was grieved in his heart because Simon remembered 
that he had betrayed the Lord. But yet, the Lord was giving him an opportunity to repent. The Lord was giving him an opportunity to be about the work of the kingdom. Jesus would tell those disciples, I don't want you to do anything until the Holy Spirit comes and fills you. I want you to go back to Jerusalem and I want you to wait on the Holy Spirit to come. And on the day of Pentecost, the Holy Spirit would come and fill those disciples. The Holy Spirit would give them the power to be able to change the world. And those disciples were willing to make that difference willing to put it all on the line for the sake of the gospel. And Jesus Christ would provide them everything that they would need to make that difference. He says to Simon Peter, follow me. And that's the same question that he is asking each and every one of us this morning, to follow him. And he is letting us know that not only will he meet our needs physically, but he will meet our needs spiritually. There will be days when the fish will not bite. There will be difficult days ahead. There will be days that you will not understand it all. There will be days when when we have to depend upon the Holy Spirit to reveal the truth to us. But folks, when you and I put our faith and trust in what Jesus Christ did on Calvary's cross, and we maintain our faith in what Jesus Christ did at Calvary's cross, then he will provide everything that you and I need to be able to feed the sheep, to be able to feed the lambs, to be able to make a difference in the lives of people all around us. And so this morning, when things don't always go our way, when the fish doesn't bite, don't give up. Know that the Lord will never leave us nor forsake us, but the Lord will be with us even unto the end. And the Lord is calling us to be faithful to make that difference in the lives of those around about us. Hymn number 338, where he leads, I will follow.
Heavenly Father, there are days when the fish don't bite. But Lord, we know that we can count on you. We know that you will provide and meet each and every one of our needs. That you will fill us with your special, precious Holy Spirit. And that your Holy Spirit will guide us and direct us in all the ways that you would have us to go. Heavenly Father, help us this day to put our faith and trust in what you have done for us at Calvary's cross. Heavenly Father, we pray that not our will, but your will be done. That Heavenly Father, that we will deny ourselves and we will take up the cross and follow you. We ask it in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.